What's going on, guys? It's gonna be a video. Just I'm, I'm. There's been questions uh, that's been submitted in the comment section of a few podcasts that I've been uploading, and people are wondering, wait, what the hell? Is it? Are you done with videos? Is this, is this all? It's gonna be uploaded? What's the deal with this? Blah, blah blah. Okay, I'm gonna answer all those questions quickly and brief, briefly. Um, I think that's like the same thing. Yeah, brief, briefly and accurate. And if there's still any more questions regarding something I didn't answer regarding the podcast, you can always just submit them or just answer them down below as a comment, and I'll answer them. I promise I'll get to all those questions because chances are there aren't, there's not even going to be that many questions. I'm gonna answer everything you, you any questions or concerns you may have over that. And also I'll give my two cents on a couple of things that, that have been going on in WWE lately. But uh, yeah, let's get to it. All right, number one. Are the podcasts going to replace my videos on a cha- on my channel on a permanent basis? No, it's just the project that I like to do on the side, and it gives me uh, um, the it gives me the opportunity to talk about things in depth and just extensively, and give every little thought on that. Which brings me on to reason number two: Why are they so long? That, in my opinion, that's what podcasts are supposed to do. They're supposed to be long. Look at Cole Cabana's podcast. Look at you can listen to radio show podcasts, no matter what kind of podcast you may download or listen to on iTunes, chances are they're going to be at least 40 minutes. That's the point of them. They're not supposed to be brief. They're supposed to be a discussion and, in, and a thorough, in-depth discussion. So that's why they're they're that long. And that explains why the WWE, uh, the, the year in review of 2002 in WWE, which was split into two parts and went over two minutes or two hours combined, was that. Because who can really cover the year of 2002 in WWE in detail in 10 minutes it's impossible there's no way you can cover all that i mean unless you're rushing through everything and even that i don't think you can do it under 10 minutes uh number th- what's another thing number three what's another thing i was going to mention um oh yeah the goal of those podcasts for me is to eventually upload all podcasts only on itunes that way you guys can download them and put them on your mp3 player your ipod your iphone your I- blackberry whatever it is and listen to them wherever you are and not needing internet connection to be able to listen to them. The reason I'm putting them on YouTube right now is to kind of give it a test run and see if you guys give a rat's ass about them. And so far, actually, I don't get, I'm not going to lie, I don't get as many views as I do on my videos, but I'm not, if I can just get a small portion of people to be interested in them, it's worth my time. That's all. I don't, I don't need 2,000, 5,000 people listening to every single one. I just need at least a few people that I know that, okay, they're going to be looking forward to what I'm going to have to say about and, and Steve, of course, because Steve is in the park as well. What Steve and I have to see on something. And so far, I've been getting the the uh, the um, um, the uh, I've been getting the uh, damn. I'm so I'm stuck right now. I'm getting the uh, impression. Fuck the impression that there's some people that do go out of the way and they listen to them, which is good. And th- um, which brings me on to another thing. If I do keep getting interest from uh, from that people or, or and or more people, trust me, the audio quality is going to get even better. I'm going to um, be purchasing a program to record um, the conversation between my, Steve and myself. That way it won't sound so like obvious that it's over Skype or that it's over this. It's going to sound like a normal discussion, like if we're right next to each other. Uh, it's just going to have crystal clear audio, and this is, but this is only if. Um, I see that it's still gaining interest because I don't want to go out of my way and buy some stuff for the podcast if I know people are not even going to listen to it. Um, and then if it, if and when it does make it onto iTunes, I'll be linking every new podcast on um, the description box of my videos. That way it makes it even easier for you to have access to them. Um, but um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. If there's any more questions regarding the podcast, feel free to leave them down as a comment and I'll be sure to get to them. Uh, now for what's been going on in WWE. Um, first of all, I know, I know uh, WWE Punk Fan 19 asked uh, if we're gonna make a podcast. Steve and myself are gonna make a podcast regarding Hell in a Cell and Raw last night's Raw. We're not because a we both didn't watch the pay per view and b Steve just didn't want to. <laughs> and yeah, uh, but I did manage to watch the last match of Hell in a Cell, which was the Triple Threat and. I have two things to say about that. One, I hated the fact that there was a title change and WWE did a lot of shit at the end that by the time the pay-per-view was over, you're like, oh yeah, there was a WWE title change. And it merely made you forget based on all the, the ruckus that happened when Miz and Truth came out there and the arrests that were going on, the fact that there was like fucking 50 guys around the cell. It was just, you know, like a lot of shit to really distract you from just what just happened. 
Uh, however, which brings me on to my next point, I really do like what they're doing in Miz and Truth because it makes them important. It makes you want to know what's going to happen. And this whole angle that they're doing right now, it really keeps you second guessing. Just when you think you're figuring out what they're going to do, now they're doing this whole thing where the, or the roster is on strike. And now you don't, it's like, okay, wait. So it's like, and just when you think you got to figure it out, they throw you another thing that makes you, okay, forget what I just said last week. Now I think this is going to happen. So that's always a good thing. However, I do agree with Man on Fire's uh, Man on Fire 310's latest video title, which read, I believe, Dodi does things really bad or really good. I agree with that. They can it, it's 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 a hit and miss here, and um, I don't I I want to say that they're gonna do a good job, but for some reason I think they're gonna fuck it up in the end. But like I said, just when I think I have it figured out, they give me something else that makes me second guess. I was talking to Stevie Breach on Skype last night. He was saying, what if The Rock's going to be the guy who comes back and saves the WWE? Oh, man, I'm going to fucking go on a rant if that happens. And he's got a point. Dodie has done that before. Where Rock has been the almighty savior for the company. They did that in 01 when he came back and saved the WWE from going out of business to the Alliance. And will, will they do that this time? Uh, something leads me to believe that they might because that way... Uh, well, first of all, I think this this whole angle's payoff is going to be at Survivor Series, and Rock is wrestling at Survivor Series. Plus, I do agree with something else Steve said, and that's the fact that they may want to get some of the kids cheering for Rock, or at least to have something to to know about the Rock. For those who don't, for the kids that don't know who the Rock is, well, at least they can always go back and say, "Well, he's the guy that saved WWE from Miz and Truth." So they have reasons to do this. Will they do it? I don't know. Like I said, they're doing stuff that's making me second guess myself, which is a good thing, though. Um, by the way, just really quickly before I get this, I do give a thumbs up to bring it back to old IC title. I liked how they modified it, give it a little more shaped gold on the all the plates actually, and that's pretty cool. Uh, Mark Henry still looking good. Um, I'm I'm interested in what they're doing. I know some people really hate the or Orton and Mark Henry feud. I hope that they keep the belt on Mark Henry, have Taker come back, do a program with Henry, and have Henry beat him. That'll really put him over. Um, as if beating Orton cleanly hasn't put him over already, but, you know, Jack Swagger did that last year, and look what that got him, you know. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. If you guys have any questions, again, about the podcast, leave them down below, because I really want, I don't want any confusion regarding that podcast, especially people thinking that I'm going to replace those with my videos, because that's not the, that's not it at all, but, um, yeah, thank you guys for watching.